Hello, welcome back to Chaos Gate. I'm Jade Star. Oh, she'll be joining us when we thaw him out for the next mission. Uh, for right now, though, after following our last mission, we don't have anything to do but to kill time, research, and we're going to reposition the edict back into the middle of the sector so that we can respond to the next Bloom mission. to sit on our hands while the bloom spreads unchallenged. And here is Vakir to tell us that the bloom mission is timed out, the planet has gotten more infected and she's angry about it, uh, but there's nothing we can do about that. We can't respond to all of them all of the time. Uh, and that's just going to lead us right into our next cutscene about research and plot. This poxwalker was one of the Imperial faithful afflicted with a strain of mutagenic virus. There is no doubt we are dealing with the work of the plague god Nurgle. This must be the bloom whispered of in those astropathic fragments. Within the carcass, I found a germ of some ancient power corrupted with a foul psychic resonance. This seed is used to spread the virus. Of that, I am certain. But it arrived to me damaged, and there is little else I can learn from it. In order to study how we might fight this plague, I must acquire one of these seeds completely intact. I can instruct your brothers on how to extract these specimens properly. Please ensure they pay attention. The Emperor loathes indolence. Let's not disappoint him. This is Inquisitor Cartha Vakir of the Ordo Malleus. I am alumnus of Evixia Danica. Access code Clarion Magenta 11 17 21. I require immediate response from Titan. This is Grandmaster Vardan Kai responding, Inquisitor. This act borders on heresy. The screams of the astropods you burned already reverberate through the warp. It is fortunate for you that I am prosecuting a campaign in the nearby Chimera system. I suggest you explain yourself, and quickly. Grandmaster, I have commandeered the Baleful Edict. We face- You have seized a Grey Knight Strike Cruiser. As is my right. I have foreseen dire omens for this sector. Already Nurgle's poxwalkers roam free. Oh, indeed. I'm surprised an agent of your pedigree is not equipped to deal with such lesser threats of chaos. Agravain, perhaps you can clear up this nonsense for me. My lord, he fell in battle during our last campaign against the Cadium cult. We had been returning to Titan for repairs when this Inquisitor intervened. Ah, oh, Brother Ektar, that is sorry news. I trust then that you have appointed one of our brothers to act in his stead. Well, speak up then, Commander. What say you to this Inquisitor's story? Intriguing. However, the galaxy is full of unsolved mysteries. I am confident these poxwalkers are the symptom of a much greater cancer. I only need a little time to conduct further research. Very well. I am not in the habit of second-guessing those under my command. That is, until given a good reason. I will leave the Baleful Edict in your care. You have my thanks, Grandmaster. But there is yet another reason I desire to speak with you. As steward of the Armory of Titan, I had hoped you could release further assistance. Don't thank me yet. I will give you 60 Tertaean Solar Days to prove this threat warrants the deployment of an entire Strike Force. Battle-worn as it is, Strike Force Xyphos could be put to good use in several campaigns across the galaxy. Any further requisition from my arsenal will have to be earned. But I... Typical. After each Grand Master's report, you can spend your requisition to unlock and upgrade armor slots. The resource slot gives you access to the new knight reinforcements, servitors, grimoires, and other resources at the end of a mission. 
You can only unlock or upgrade each slot once per report. Slot upgrades increase your chance of accessing more and better equipment and resources. All right, so now we get to unlock the Armory of Titan. Uh, every time Grandmaster Kai calls, we'll get an opportunity to spend surplus requisition unlocking or upgrading uh, one of these categories. Uh, we can't get the bottom one at the moment. Uh, the here will get to that uh, sooner or later. So for right now, I'm going to get Knight Requisition because we desperately need more recruits. Uh, melee Requisition because melee weapons, I feel like, have the, the biggest impact on things. Um, and War Gear Requisition, uh, it's kind of a toss-up between that or maybe Armor right now. Um, but War Gear can have some really cool things, and I want to get that upgrade to level 3 as soon as possible because some of the level 3 War Gear uh, can be really substantial benefits. Uh, also, this all happened because we researched the Poxy, so we now need to choose a new research. I think there's only one or two things we can research right now. We uh, we need to go get one of those seeds intact, like uh, Vakir said, to start researching pretty much anything that's not on the top row of the book. So we're going to take Warp Field Penetration, which will allow for stratagems, uh, which will be single-use consumables in the fights, you and then we're going to go talk night. to Vakir and see what all the other NPCs so have simple. to say about this turn of events. I need the seeds intact for further study. If we must. The Grey Knights and Inquisition have worked together since the earliest days of our orders. We each have our own role to play as partners. Yes, partners in my mission. Know that I will not sacrifice your men unless the need is great. Very well. My research beckons. Do you seek wisdom, Commander? I am no ancient, but might be of some help. Besides a clear violation of communication protocol, you mean? Arcane talismans as catalysts for corruption are scarcely a novelty to us Knights of Titan. The Grand Master will weigh our value to this campaign. Perhaps there's some piece to this puzzle we do not yet see. By all means. All tech priests are eccentric in their own way. There is no being I trust more to look after the Baleful Edict. Her competence is beyond question. Ancient, yes, assuredly. Whatever best helps you, Commander. We are the Hammer. Remember that. Commander, let us be efficient. An unclean, organic thing fouling my ship. Waiting for new input. The machine spirits are restless. Affirmative. The interaction is over. Alright, after all of that lovely dialogue and exposition, 
Uh, we are in route again. I'm going to stay here at this center star in the hopes that I am uh, next to whatever next blue mission spawn. And our barracks is finished, which is very important. I don't have the requisition to fill it up right now, but having a barracks of, uh, what, 12? Three of each class is going to be really, really useful. And we're going to go get the prognostic cars on the line. Uh, that's going to provide a benefit to the star map later. And for right now, we just have to pass time until the next bloom happens. Which uh, doesn't take very long. You get a little bit of a uh, downtime between bloom spawns. And unfortunately, this one has spawned like equidistant in every direction from us. It takes about half the time to get to any of these missions, so it is very doubtful we are going to get two of them. In fact, just getting to the, the one on the far left of the map, we're barely in range to make it there. Uh, so when I have these three missions, and I'm, I know I'm only going to make one, I'm going to start looking at the rewards and trying to figure out what I want the most. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. Uh, Jalbarath here has some okay things. Uh, its Glorious Deed is probably the worst one. I, it pays the most, like three requisition, but going in with only three units instead of uh, four is really, really devastating. Uh, the big deciding factor for me, though, is that uh, Hagen is going to offer an Apothecary. Uh, we only have one of those at current, so getting a second one into the roster is probably the most determining factor about which unit or uh, which mission I'm going to pick. And I'm just going to go double check my barracks here and just make sure, yep, I only have one Apothecary and one Interceptor, so those are high priority recruits for me. Uh, it does actually even come in at level 3, which is kind of cool, but also maybe not. Uh, we'll get to that at the end of the video after the mission. Uh, Olish and I will have some thoughts on that. And in route, the Agrarium uh, is now operational. I'm going to have to figure out what I need to pick next. I think we're going to try to get the Plasma Reactor upgraded. Oh, it takes more servitors than I have. Okay, that's frustrating. Uh, that's definitely something that I usually doesn't happen in XCOM, is that your next uh, the next thing you want to build you don't have the resources for. So I'm just going to upgrade the Agrarium until uh, we have more servitors. Uh, the mission we're going to has enough, so we we'll complete the mission, grab servitors, the and then be able to upgrade. And, should review our prognostica and uh, we can attune it right when now, are and it has some benefits. System. They will extend the mission timer in all I'm going to sit on it for the rest of the video, though. There is an optimal uh, location to place all of your prognostic cars. Um, I'm pretty sure the planet I have selected is, is one of the optimal locations, as it covers, what, four, five, six, seven planets with it. Can't really do better than that. Um, however, the star map that we see is not the full and complete star map. Uh, it's going to expand later. And, uh, and then I'll start dropping prognostic cars. But I need to go get... Oh, we finished warp field penetration. All right, we have a stratagem. I was about to say I need to get down to the cryo decks and thaw Olish out as we're almost in orbit of our next mission. But we can take a moment here and uh, realize I need seeds. I need green seeds for every stratagem uh, that's currently unlocked. I need one for the plot. And that just means we only have Psychic Attunement. Psychic Attunement makes the missions done where there are prognostic cars uh, receive benefits. It's actually really nice. We'll get to that in a bit. All right, we're in route. I got to go get to the, uh, the freezer real quick. All right, we have arrived at our mission site. And definitely for the first time and not re-recording commentary because I noise-gated uh, my audio to oblivion, and definitely we haven't reconverted the Exterminatus torpedo hanger into an ice cream machine to appease Olish. Who is here now? Hi, Olish. I somehow managed to run out of ice cream. What? <laughs> we, he explicitly removed a Exterminatus torpedo for ice cream. Yeah, and they ate it all. Damn. Those are a lot of ice cream. So, uh, hey, Valor Deeds, or Glorious Deeds are cool, and their challenges for extra requisition almost always worth doing, except for the ones that really, really aren't. Yeah, some of them suck really bad, and I think it would be much better off if, if it were just a always-on thing that punished you less, like if you could partially do them to avoid the negative. Yeah. 
I don't know how I'd implement it. Uh, and as uh, we were talking over Hector, yeah, we can send wounded people into combat. That's uh, something I think we're familiar with in other games. Uh, all it does is... <coughs> oh, choking on a fragment of potato chip. <clears throat> all it does is lower the maximum HP of a unit for the, for the, the mission. Oh, it's still there. I need a drink. I'm dying. Uh, which means that you're never completely out of your, like, advanced units, but uh, you may not want to take an advanced unit into combat who has, say, maybe negative 50% max HP. That is dangerous. Now, the max HP penalty also scales based on the difficulty level. Oh, it does. On easier difficulties, it's less severe. Ah. Oh. That wasn't always the case. They changed it in a patch at some point. Gotcha. Ah. Uh. Destination located. The Court of the Seven Miseries has been spotted within this war zone. Nurgle's minions clearly seek out places where death and decay are most rampant. More fuel for the fire of the bloom. We must stop the seeds from taking root here. There's our question objective. is. Yeah. yeah. Does Nurgle seek out places of death and decay? Or do places of death and decay show up because Nurgle is there? This is a weird, like, heresy chicken and egg question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, something about the pods that I really noticed. I, I appreciate how they have an arrow telling you which direction they're going to go. Oh yeah, that's super handy. Uh, which is going to lead us into an interesting situation here as I attempt to ambush uh, this pod. Uh, is that the pods are abstracted. And you'll see why at the end of this turn, but it's weird. The pods don't exist until you get line of sight on the center tile or whatever of where the pod that theoretically exists. Nurgle exists in a sort of quantum state, and until observed, uh, both exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Uh, what I mean by that, really, though, is that to the left of this little gap between the containers, Right over there was where the pod was. The pod is now over there on the right, and the point Ready in between is in line of sight of my units. They should have seen the pod walk from left to right and activated somewhere in the middle of that opening. Uh, that was not the case. Yeah, this is something that generally, the, the whole abstraction thing gets done to save resources. Nice. Uh, even XCOM 2 does it to a degree. Uh, not quite as egregious as this, but yeah, there's no no point in having Ew, those things, you know, taking up CPU cycles or potentially render time by existing until they matter. What do you advise, Commander? I feel like you just described vast swaths of my life. Uh, anyway, Vakir wants us to use the stratagem where we just researched uh, prior to arriving here, but there's no reason for it right now, so just click out of that. I, I appreciate Vakir's moxie, though. One, one thing that watching people play this game is people don't use their stratagems. They cost you nothing. Yeah. They're a limited resource and the game wants you to spend your limited resources because you don't My actually lose them. I mean, Every enemy is a giant enemy crab. <laughs> one enemy is a giant enemy crab. <laughs> there is at least one literal giant robotic crab in this game. Uh, sometimes I kind of forget about them. It is, it is nice that they are there. Um... Maybe what I would have done was break it off of the, the top right UI element where it's just one button among many that I don't use. Yeah. And, you know, made it its own window where it actually showed the individual ones. I don't know. Yeah, there's got to be a way to make it more... to remind you that they exist. More horrors invade our realm. Uh, so something here... One of the differences between like XCOM 2 style pod activations is that you, when you activate a pod, they generally are activated at the edge of your line of sight. The line yeah. of sight is probably around 15 tiles away. Um, and that means for you to get shots in on them, you have to spend a lot of your AP moving close. You're not going to be able to do a whole lot besides maybe focus down and kill one guy. So the enemy almost always has a chance to do something to you. 
which yeah. steps back to something we've talked about in previous videos. I'll continue to talk about it for the rest of time. <laughs> the game does not really is not designed to allow you to avoid damage. The enemy will do things, and you just have to suck it up. And it's fine. You have hit points. You have a lot of HP. <laughs> Taking wounds does not bring your people out of action in the same way it does in XCOM 2. It's fine. Take some hits. Use Age of Shield if you know you're going to take hits and can't avoid it. And you've got an AP that's not better spent shooting something. And yeah. To this, though, like, look how far back my apothecary is. Uh, maybe about... 10 tiles of movement just to kind of get up into the same courtyard with everything else. So I'm spending two out of my three AP just to even get within range. Uh, I think I just moved there and I'm actually just out of range. And Overwatch doesn't even reach them. So yeah, judging by this movement, I'd say the closest cultist was 11 tiles away from that move. So if I didn't want to cluster up too close, I really had to spend all of my movement spreading out and getting cover. Meaning two-thirds of my turn is largely just movement and kind of a waste, whereas now the cultists are going to get their three AP to do whatever they want, which is usually going to be move, probably move again, and then shoot. Yeah, and you've mentioned in the past that on these activations, you do like to sort of hang back and set up to at the very least force the enemy to spend some of their AP or all of their AP moving forward on you. I do and like I to like try to make them do that, yeah. I feel like that's intended to a large degree hmm. um, you take your long range shots and they either take long range shots back while you're getting people in position to move forward to, or, or they push in on you and spend most of their AP doing that at which point you can then spend your next turn shooting but again there's nothing that you can do that's going to completely avoid damage short right. of you know running away yeah cowardice I hadn't really thought about that uh, in a design sense. Also, uh, I never really knew that the uh, the Heavy Stubber would destroy full cover like the uh, Psycan does, which is cool. I mean, it's not good yeah. for me, but it's, uh, it's a cool feature. Um, the whole thing about, you see what you're saying, like, move forward, make them take one main shots or whatever, is they usually don't spend all three AP moving, even if I try to, to force them. And oh, yeah. these early packs don't have to. Uh, because Keep the heavy stubbers have 14 Keep range. They can absolutely suppress or shoot me from farther away than I can Pain force them to me. come close. Uh, also, that cultist ran right between two knights and survived, which is unfortunate. Oh, it's because it's my purgatory. He didn't have a melee weapon to make an attack of opportunity with. Uh, so the halberd has first strike. Uh, yeah. Which is when an enemy moves adjacent to them, they might might get stabbed first. Uh, if you move past somebody, like a D&D attack of opportunity or a Blood Bowl tackle zone, you will also similarly get attacked, skill and no skill. Uh, Halberds with first strike do not get to double up on this, as we've just seen. Uh, yeah. However, first strike is very good, and there is one particular Halberd where first strike is fucking amazing. Oh, is it the one with knockback? It's the one with knockback. Oh, that's so funny. It's so great. Some yeah, melee Nurgle runs up to you, gets poked, flies back three spaces, and just kind of goes, well, I guess I'll just sit here and end my turn now. Fuck me. Yeah, enemies don't like to repeat the same action, so even though they have three AP, they don't like to sp like do the same thing twice. If they try and move forward in melee, they'll move forward, get knocked back by that cowbird, and then they didn't like to move again, and they already attempted to melee, so they just kind of stand there, confused. Yeah. They might take a shot out in the open. Maybe. I usually think that uh, them getting bounced and knocked back is usually on their last AP to get close, but that that wouldn't be the case if they have to move in melee separately. They would have had to have one in reserve for the melee attack. I don't know, but that halberd absolutely screws with the AI, and then the AI doesn't know what to do after getting bounced. Yeah, I, I think the AI predetermines its actions at some point, and mm. when it suffers a knockback, it basically cancels everything after that. It does feel like that. Because there, there are some enemies that have multiple melee attacks, and it will still stymie their entire turn if they get right. bounced like that. Other than defeating melee attacks, that halberd, or any melee weapon with knockback, is incredibly funny, uh, because a lot of the maps have edges, or pits, or chasms. And ring-outing opponents is a very quick and easy way to cut down on enemies. Enemy 
enemy down. It's not like enemies are gonna drop equipment that you have to loot. Nobody's <laughs> complaining about you using explosives. <laughs> uh, that's the favorite thing about uh, Space Valen. Valen did nothing wrong. I, I have that around here somewhere. Yeah, I do have it right here. Valen did nothing wrong. Ah. I paid money for John Daly to say that. <laughs> so I can see what the thought process here is. is that, do I get the kill or do I get cover? Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Quicksilver is good for. Two AP. Get the kill and get to cover. Yes. It feels a little bad wasting it on just like a single shitty cultist. Right. Well, it... You're spending a stratagem to avoid taking damage. Taking yeah. position. It's not like the most effective use of it, but yeah, they're there to be used. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I did not actually avoid damage. Well, you avoided damage from the guy you killed. Oh, that's true. Yes, yes. Um, kind of the uh, conversation about range, everything being like 5, 10, 15, is that uh, even though I was behind full cover and was facing 90 degrees towards the uh, opponent, I wasn't more than 10 tiles away, so he was just able to spend 2 AP to move, be either flanking or at least close enough to flanking that full cover allowed some damage to go through. Still shooting. One thing that you'll notice is that the, the position the enemy chose was a good position in the sense of it is behind cover, had a target that was out of cover to shoot at. Uh, if you had managed to pick a position, like if those crates weren't there, he probably wouldn't have decided to flank in that way. Probably not. Uh, but it, this is one of those things where like the battlescape is very dense. It, it can be hard to pay attention to that sort of thing. It really is just experience, and it doesn't always matter. Like, this is not necessarily going to be the perfect optimal play, but that's okay, oh, because on. Chaos Gate doesn't demand perfection. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep harping on that line. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm glad. Yeah, I came up with something that's, that's resonating. Enemy destroyed. My thought on it, though, is just that um, enemies that are even at medium range, not even at close range, have the ability to get around cover and find shots on you. There is just kind of no way around it. If the enemy wants to, pretty much any enemy that we're facing can move ten and then shoot ten. Uh, yeah, and that reveals the pod. God yep. preserve us! Uh, and when any enemy is willing to move 10 and shoot 10 to get like a flank or a, like a partial cover hit on you, it becomes well, pretty much impossible to avoid taking stray shots. Yeah, and, and you get a similar thing in Chimera Squad, which generally has much closer distances oh, yeah, yeah. for engagements. Uh, if you're using, I forgot what her name is, the uh, the leader light, who uses the shotgun mostly, she likes to go up, get get flanks on the enemy, and shoot them at close distances. But she very, very quickly can get counterflanked if you don't kill everything. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. it was possibly in position to do that. All right, hold on, I got it. Uh, that's the best I'm gonna get. I think. Yeah. No. Just... No. Those barrels are preventing you from placing the actually where they don't need it to be. Right. But Just hey, second time around. Ah, uh, I understand. <laughs> I understand why there's a pile of fire now. Because uh, there were puddles of oil on the ground prior to me throwing that grenade. Yeah. I am here to say. I didn't realize that. The terrain and the maps in this game are very Get fun. <laughs> it just... One of the you get passive little details like the oil all the time you can plan for it if you really want but you don't have to you just take advantage of it or it's just a fun wrinkle yeah everything gets destroyed or cover explodes or interacts in very fun and cinematic ways oh yeah i i, I do like how all the just bits and gribblies all along the <laughs> tabletop <laughs> yeah. you, you just you can tell by looking where you have been <laughs> yeah yeah because it's just leveled yeah it really is Oh hey, I have a I have a small lore thing uh, that's relevant to this fire. Um, power armor and especially Terminator armor should be able to walk through that with absolutely no fucks given, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is not the case in the game. <laughs> uh, walking through fire will ignite your marines. 
Uh, this this would be slightly less the case for the Marines, like the Marine sergeants who don't wear helmets. Uh, but instead of wearing helmets, they have personal force fields. Just to cover their head. <laughs> nice. I feel like that would uh, probably prevent fire. Yeah. Uh, it, the power armor itself isn't really the thing. Supposedly, a space marine would be bothered by a piddly little fire like that anyways, considering their skin is already bulletproof. Uh, I love the fact that the manholes are bigger than your frag grenades. <laughs> it's great. Get up! Get up! Uh, I think they're the same explosion size. When you say bigger, you mean more damage? damage yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the manhole is five. The crack grenades are not crack. Frag grenades are three. It's very funny. Uh, really suddenly makes me think of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle like action figure that threw manholes. Oh, I... I vaguely remember having a themed like nerf pistol that shot manholes. <laughs> nice. That thing was great for all the five minutes before it broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, some people are also mentioning that like uh, what auto guns and other things would just should absolutely not even touch power armor. That's uh, okay. So a heavy stubber, which is the equivalent of like a cruiser machine gun. Like, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the 50 cal equivalent is that we that we use on our armored vehicles is. Uh, but a 50 cal machine gun is basically what a heavy stubber is. Okay. And a heavy stubber in tabletop is a strength yes, weapon, just like a bolter. Oh, okay. Uh, a space marine skin hmm. is supposed to be bulletproof for small arms fire, but in practice, no, I mean... It's a, it's a gun. Auto guns exist in the tabletop. They're they're strength three weapons. They're not as strong as a bolter, but they're not you know worthless. They're about equivalent to a las gun, and a las gun, according to the lore, is capable of disintegrating a human being. Oof. And people make fun of them because the they call them called the flashlights and the yeah. guard. Well, that's just from the tabletop. Where they're less effective weapons than the standard bolter. I have a very small knowledge of, like, the tabletop guns from very old rules Necromunda. Yeah. I mean, Necromunda originates from even older, older rules. Because you get, you, you had stuff where, like, weapons had armor. They didn't have straight armor pen. They modified the armor save. And that is really old. Okay. That might even just be, like, Rogue Trader days. For a very long time, weapons just had you know, either you beat the AP or you don't. But then now they've gone back to modifying them. Supposedly. I haven't played since, like, 5th edition. Yes, Commander. And I'll, I'll be blunt. The tabletop 40k His game wounds. isn't actually a very good game. Oh, no. My wrath is restored, brother. What is your will? I haven't played a tabletop in decades. I mean, aside from the, like, the, the tabletop sim round of Necromunda we all tried for a while. Oh, I mean, that was great, though. Right yeah, that was. Necromunda is also not a particularly good game, but it's not intended to be. <laughs> way. Wow, way to shit on my childhood memories of playing Necromunda. Well, the, so 40k is a bad game because a lot of the... It, it is a vehicle to sell models first. Right. Necromunda yeah, yeah. just... They came up with rules and ideas that sounded cool and didn't, like many other things GW does, didn't really consider how the numbers worked out or whether it was actually like fair or balanced. <laughs> so you so you have, you know, some of your gangs are just superior to others in terms of like the skill accesses and what those skills mean. I don't actually know about new Necromunda, how that works out. Oh, uh, there's a new tabletop Necromunda rule. Oh, that's right, there is, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I stand. I even bought the box set. Nice. I just never used it. Uh, you know, I would like to financially support decisions that I approve of. And right. The decision was doing more shit like Necromunda. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, back to the mission here, though. Uh, so that's our Foxwalker that has a seed in him. He is the mission objective. Uh, it's important to know that he is the mission objective, because if we blow him up with, say, a ranged attack or a grenade, we don't get that seed. What we really need to do is melee crit him and extract that seed. Uh, that harvests 
harvests harvests the seed from him in a way that we get to keep and use as a research uh, resource later. Uh, it's also very important to know that killing the last seed carrier on a mission triggers mission mechanics. Uh, as soon as that guy dies, uh, we're going to get a two, three turn countdown until we get teleported out of the map and the map just ends immediately. But also, uh, his death is going to alert everything on the map where we are and it's also going to call in reinforcements. Yeah, so this is this is one of the reasons why Jade went and tackled that other patrol that he yeah. technically could have walked around. Uh, yeah, so uh, enemy patrols that we left on the map will show up. Uh, enemy reinforcements will show up through warp portals, which we'll be seeing uh, once all these things are dead. And you can get overwhelmed if you, I don't know, try to sneak through the mission, not clear a path, and then just, like, snipe the seed carrier. Uh, killing him last just kind of ensures that, at most, hopefully, you're only dealing with one pod. Uh, killing him first thing might suddenly mean you have to deal with the remainder of the seed carrier's guard pod and all the other stuff that has since been alerted. And you can do it and get away oh, yeah. with that. Yeah. If they're, depending on how the mission is laid out, it can be very easy to do that and not suffer any negative consequences. But depending on how the mission is laid out, it can be extremely <laughs> impractical to do that. <laughs> it can be just absolute fuck city if you do that occasionally. Uh, so I'm willing to take the one, two melee hit from this guy. I don't care. I want to kill him at the start of my turn. What is your will? Uh, and also, just to check, I see I want to try to get as high a crit chance on this guy as possible to harvest the seed. Lotus. And that is with the Justicar, because the Falchions have a higher crit chance. Or not Justicar, uh, Interceptor. The Interceptor and the Falchions have the higher crit chance. Oh, Can I wait until you get Hammerhand? Your command. Oh, yeah, Hammerhand is a great skill. Uh, it is for Justicars, and I think Interceptors get it too. But it's a, it's a very costly willpower-wise, but it's a guaranteed critical melee hit, which is well, great for harvesting seeds. guaranteed. Seeds. It's plus 100% chance. Okay, sure. If they are immune to crits, it cannot crit them. Well, there are enemies that have reduced crit chance. Oh, yeah, that's true. Enemy mm -hmm. types. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't have any other sources of crit, Hammerhand isn't necessarily a guarantee. I've claimed a seed. Uh, they actually changed the wording on Hammerhand to make it oh, yeah? a little bit more clear that it was plus 100% instead of, <laughs> instead of a guaranteed, guaranteed crit. Oh, okay. Oh, good on them for that. Uh, so here are the reinforcements I was talking about. At the end of our next, or at the end of my current turn, those are going to spew forth Nurgle. Uh, I had kind of spread out in the hopes to force the reinforcement portals from Position coming farther secure, away from me. Uh, this one right here is kind of a problem. The other one that was way back in the darkness did roughly what I wanted and has spawned way away from me where it's likely to take a turn to materialize, and then another whole turn of forward movement just to get anywhere near me. Um, these portals got changed at some point, and it's very <laughs> funny. And I'm not probably personally to blame, but I definitely noticed an exploit around them. Uh, previous versions, these portals would allow you to move into the tile that they occupy. Uh, these portals aren't just graphics or anything, they are actually on a specific tile. And if you moved a marine into that specific tile, the portal would not know what to do and would just go away. Uh, I think it would actually be way funnier is if moving a marine into that specific tile caused that marine to be teleported into the warp. Oh, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? I mean, it's... It would be the idea that you have to sacrifice a marine to stop the reinforcements, or let them come in and you know deal with the potential fight. If things are going really bad. I mean, Iolanthus, sorry, you have to do the needful for the emperor. Man, tough choices there. Uh, so Big Fatty there is a new Nurgle type. He's not really anything too terrible. He's kind of just a poxwalker that will explode on death and plague everybody near him, uh, or at least every marine near him. I think cultists too, but the poxwalkers and actual Nurgle demons proper uh, will gain two max health uh, from the pestilent explosion. Uh, but mostly they just suck because they will run into melee, die, and explode and poison all of your people. 
I do appreciate uh, that one of the things that basically every gun starts with is the ability yes, to spend more power to do one more damage. Yeah. I, uh, when I started playing the game, I thought that I was very underwhelming. Rival. And then I realized all the, the values are really small and tight, and that one more damage can save you an AP, which can be a big deal. Standing ready. Uh, and you get that we, uh, willpower back on a kill, so you come out neutral on it. Yeah, if you use it for the killing shot. Uh, right. Sometimes, you know, you might use that just to do multiple hits to kill something in 2 AP instead of 3 AP. That too, yeah. And it's usually worth spending 2 willpower for 1 AP. Uh, two things on this attack. Uh, the first, the knockdown, and then that yellow icon meant that the Purgator made a critical hit. And then second, uh, covering fire, or not covering fire, support fire from the Interceptor, adding two free damage. And support fire is great, uh, especially when we get some more points into it. It will increase to five damage, and we can take a unrelated skill to make him use it twice a turn. So you can get 10 free damage uh, at no AP cost to your interceptor every turn. And give or take anywhere, reloads. Anywhere that you're firing within weapons range of the interceptor. Yeah. Uh, also, unrelated note, uh, interceptors yep. can use silencers. Reloaded. Oh, yes. Uh, not right away, but they can get a skill for it, yes. Yeah. The, there's at least one silencer that has a weapons range of 20. <laughs> In fact, there's exactly one silencer has a weapon <laughs> range of 20. This is, this is very silly. Oh no, Pod has caught up to you. What are you going to do now? Oh no, Fox Walker is with her. <laughs> Four, five HP. It's towards the end of the mission. How will you possibly hold out? <laughs> and another Pod coming in. Yeah. Another patrol that I didn't kill previously. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it wasn't nearby. It's going right. to take some time to reach you. Right. So one thing I remember about these uh, these box logs is that they're 5 HP. So that's a Psy Cannon hit. Uh, and then it is one more HP than our standard Bolter or melee weapons will actually do. However, uh, Boars, the Terminator with the Albert, has a unique soldier trait that gives him plus one to all melee that's damage. Also, the Purgator can shoulder check people for one damage and some knockback, which I find very funny. I'll just finish these guys off, because might as well. I know there have been times when you wished you could just do that with anybody. Yeah. My blade is yours. Uh, so this trait on Boars, it lets him one-shot these common enemies, whereas the Interceptor or anybody else is going to require two hits. And every Grey Knight gets generated with one personal quirk. Uh, and they can vary from useful to very powerful to kind of useless, and I can't believe I activated this pod with that. Oh no, you activated this pod. Us. This is terrible. Now now they're going to get a whole turn and you're out of position. Yeah. How will you ever recover from this terrible tactical situation? <laughs> Your command. At least four strike lets me uh, close that four to five HP gap. Uh, I will say about those uh, those traits uh, that some of them are insanely useful. Uh, one of them will slow down EXP, or at least require more for every level up, but at level 3, 6, and 9 will grant the Marine an extra uh, skill point, which is possibly the strongest thing there is. It's just the best overall. Yeah. Uh, one of them makes your Marines immortal. They can't, yeah. they can't die. Uh, it's the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> It actually kind of is, um, because they start with negative two willpower because of that, for some yeah. reason. And uh, that can mean you start off with, like, an interceptor with one willpower. And that is one teleport's worth. <laughs> and not enough. You haven't seen it a whole lot yet, but uh, interceptor's teleporting is really strong. You can basically do it almost every turn, and it won't be a bad decision. And typically they're killing whatever they teleport onto, so they kind of refund that willpower. Alright. How to deal with this enemy pod. Ah, bullets! This hurts! Ow, stop! <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we got 
really sarcastic at maybe a singular particular post I saw on the thread. <laughs> well, actually, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm mugging for the camera, because as soon as the enemy turns, it's over. We're not going to kill any of you dudes. And... Oh, we're going to just teleport out. You're just yeah, going to teleport yeah. out. Right, that is fair. Um, if I paid a little bit more attention to the... Uh, countdown time in the top left when UI is on my turn. Yeah, uh, Olish is exactly right. If I could just have basically fallen back and done almost nothing last turn, and it would have been fine. Uh, you just clear out what's next to you, fall back, and then Luna just teleports you out before they can do anything about it. Uh, all, everything that's happening on the enemy's turn is essentially irrelevant because they didn't injure anybody enough for it to matter. Sometimes it can matter, but in this case, yeah. it, you know, even though this would have been a slightly worse tactical position, it doesn't matter because you don't have to fight it. You yeah. have to go to an extraction point, you don't have to board a dropship, you just zap out. That's great, yeah. Uh, there are other missions that have similarly abrupt mission ends that will just immediately teleport you out as soon as the goal is accomplished, and it's worth knowing exactly what those are. And so that you can kind of what would otherwise be a suicide charge, like. blitz the objective, and then Lunette's just like, oh, good job, you're out of here, boom. Missions, or at the uh, next armory report. requisition time. Yes. Uh, so, Rank 3 Apothecary. Yep. A the Auto -righteous only, like, hammer. really nice hammer. Because it, it has the 25% chance to gain AP on a crit. You don't yeah. have very much crit. No. But Not yet. Later on, that type of hammer would be quite worth using. Yeah. Uh, it's Force Strike also did twice as much damage as a normal Force Strike, yeah. which is a consideration. Hammers tend to lean into high damage on crit and or Force Strikes. I'm just going to take the Apothecary, because we only started with six Marines, which means we only have one Apothecary and one Interceptor, in and I want to get backups for them as soon as possible. Yeah, the drawback, getting a level 3 Apothecary isn't actually always good. <laughs> no. uh, because they come with their skill points pre-assigned. Uh, uh, it used to be that you couldn't respect marines at all. They changed it so that you can spend requisition to do it. Requisition uh, at time, I think. At the time, you could you respect could, but them. You had to spend a marine to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can spend requisition to uh, respect a marine to our liking. And so, you serve the emperor oh, well, yep, commander. Yep, we got we a should seed. study this seed at once. Everything rests on what we might learn from it. Simmer down, yeah, Stola. I'm not going to interrupt our psychic attunement research for it, but that'll be the next thing we get. Yeah, and then I'm going to go over to the barracks. Plot. Yes, and uh, upgrades. And research. So, our new apothecary coming in at level 3 Master. should have some skills. Oh, he has Terminator armor. We are yours to come on. And he has craft skills. Early, well, not really, but he has 3 skill points I definitely wouldn't have chosen, which is half of what he came with. Well, that's part of the fun of this, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for two requisition, we can retool any marine that we come with. Uh, the part I'm not happy about here is the the middle upper branch, which goes into scourging, which is a psychic bleed uh, effect. Bleed used to be really bad. It was just two damage, end of enemy turn for number of turns equal to bleed stack, and it's been changed to bleed damage at end of turn equal to number of bleed stacks decrement number of bleed stacks each turn. So it's kind of like how you expect Poison to work in Slay the Spire or Dots in other games. Yeah. And that makes it reasonably more effective, but still not something I would really go for. Um, but against like 5 HP cultists, the default Scourge ability, first turn's going to do 3, second turn's going to do 2, and it's going to wipe them out. So if you can hit a whole bunch of them with it, it's okay. But the big thing is that it does its damage at the end of the turn rather than the start of the turn, so... By relying on that bleed damage to secure the kill, you are giving your enemy another turn to act. Uh, and then I just briefly showed that uh, if you do not like your marines, you can send them back to Titan to regain the one requisition. Which is something you kind of do. Uh, if you have a larger barracks and you're set up, you can just always take the, the soldier reward from a mission for one requisition, look them over, and then decide yes or no. And it costs you nothing to do that. Oh, there's so much to explain. Ah, oh, this game's so good, though. Uh, but that is all for today. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we have to go get Alish's ice cream replenished at the nearest starport, and we'll see you next time.
Vedela 